Hi guys, Weekly Whirl 11. I wanted to do a quick update for everyone because a lot has been going on this week that was super important for Harmony Turbines. It uh, isn't going to be a very exciting update for most of you out there who aren't machinists and who don't care about machine codes and figuring out all of the ins and outs of the machines and how they operate, but anyone who is a machinist or has been around it will know that what I was doing this week was really huge. So rigid tapping, what is that? Well, rigid tapping is when you're going into a part at the exact speed, 32 um, you know, threads per inch or 24 threads per inch, whatever, you're going in, you're feeding in at the exact speed you need to, to tap while you're spinning. So you're, you're syncing your spindle with your, um, your feed rate to get the perfect alignment that you need and the perfect feed and speed for that tap to go in, stop, and then back out of the part. Doing it in aluminum is one thing, doing it in steel is another because steel is very unforgiving. You have to have things exactly correct. So I broke about five taps testing things and working on the analam controls that we have, trying to figure out what was going on, why we were pulling through the material rather than gliding through it at the exact speed and feed we need. Ultimately, after an entire day of working with it, I got the MDI to work and was able to do it. Then I translated that into the post processor so that I could write the programs, send them over and have it automatically just work. I'll show a little clip of the successful part where I was tapping seven holes in a row and doing the rigid tapping there and then backing it out. We are rigid tapping, folks. Successfully rigid tapping. A little bit nervous about this routine, but yesterday I worked the entire day on it and got the rigid tapping functioning. Basically, it worked exactly like it's supposed to, so that was a huge win. What we were making were these little parts here, and these little guys are T-nuts, special T-nuts, that take 832 studs. These are going to allow us to go directly into the underside of our gears that we had water jet cut. Because you'll remember from previous episodes that these gears that were water jet cut have too much run out, too much uh, error, and they don't mesh together properly. But now that we have the machines, we can use the machines to clean these gears up, but we have to hold these gears exactly in the right position each and every time. So between these special T-nuts, a little bit of uh, stops for the back corners of the gears, we'll be able to hold these in perfect position and then go in and clean up the gears and then flip it over and clean up the other side and just rinse and repeat. We have 20 large gears, 10 smaller gears to do. So. That was a huge achievement to be able to make these little special T-nuts. I know they don't look like a lot, but they're made to very exacting um, dimensions for the slots over here, as well as where these holes are in relation to one another. There was a lot of math going on, a lot of technical things that you don't need to be bored with, but suffice it to say, it was a very successful week getting tooled up so that we could fix these gears. And a lot of people who have been around machine shops understand that tooling up is sometimes half of your entire job, not just running the jobs, but tooling up. And when you're a prototype shop like what we are right now, we're in prototype mode, tooling up is huge. It's all about getting the fixtures right, getting the work offsets, getting the tool lengths. And that's another thing. If I took you over to the other machine right now, you would see that I have six tools loaded into that carousel and to that tool changer and have been working with doing all kinds of maneuvers and operations, chamfering, rigid tapping, drilling, peck drilling, um, facing, all kinds of all kinds of stuff and figured out what was wrong with the facing tool from last episode where we had a really rough finish on the top of that. It turned out that the the tool wasn't tightened properly from the factory. There was one large machine screw that was not tightened properly 
and that needed to be tightened so that the whole head was held rigidly. Once that was done, now we're getting beautiful finishes on the top of our units. Here's what I was talking about earlier. The first part that we made with the um, shell mill, face mill, where it was loose and it made a horrible, hor horrible surface finish for us, trying to figure out what was going on there. This is the third piece that we did and you can see that surface finish is much much nicer and there's some chamfering and engraving so just learning how to do that stuff and then these were the parts that we did in steel and you can see those surface finishes are also very nice um, even did a little bit of HT engraving on them so they're going to be our new T-nuts that we have for doing the gearing and locking the gearing in place so that we can fix the gearing up. Once the scoops are welded and the gears are working and cleaned up, then we can move on to assembling the scoops on the scoop array and getting them all rigidly held in the frame so that um, we can move on to assembling it in an upright position and of course it would be able to spin then. So, um, we are moving forward one step at a time, learning. I know it seems like there's a lot going on with the learning curve here of these old machines, but that learning curve is a once and done thing. Once you have that knowledge, once you've recorded that knowledge, once you've written the programs and fixed the, the post-processor, then you're able to move right through assembly as you begin moving through um, iterations with parts and manufacturing exactly what you need at the press of a button. So anyone who's been around the machine shop knows that writing the program, getting the program dialed in, getting it tweaked, getting it working takes a long time. And so that's part of the problem with a prototype shop. You're always doing that. But in our case, once we get through the prototype for the one kilowatt unit, we'll have many of these pieces locked in that we can then start saying, all right, now we could reliably reproduce all of these parts to put one kilowatt units together for this fixed price with this amount of time, and then everything becomes a mathematical equation after that for how many we can do a week or how many we can do a month, how much we need to charge to make payroll and buy a new material for more units. So um, I don't really think there was anything else that I wanted to talk about right now. Um, a lot of just very technical things going on. We are still working on the back end with the uh, legal counsel to get the corporate structure and the corporate shares and everything worked out, get all of that filed and, and done properly, all of the T's crossed and I's dotted. So that work continues and just heavy, heavy technical work here on our side. Um, Josh has not been around more than one day this week because I needed the time to work on this stuff and needed to totally, totally focus. I probably put in, um, no joke, probably 85 hours this week working on this stuff, just banging through it, knocking through it. And it's been amazing progress, but it's been some very challenging and rewarding work at the same time. So thank you for believing in us. Thank you for sticking with us and believing in what we're doing and what changes we're trying to affect in our world to make our world a better place. Um, it's great to see all of the comments, to see the following of people out there, and I, we hope that you continue on following and supporting us. Um, yes, I am wearing the new Harmony Turbines t-shirt. so. I've been so busy on this, I have not, I apologize, I have not gotten the link up on the website yet for people to order their t-shirts. I know you guys are kind of excited for the t-shirts. I get a few emails about it, but I think you're much more excited for this. Um, I feel like I will get that t-shirt link up there soon, but I think I need to stay focused on this and keep banging through and making progress. So um, I'm putting this as a priority, t-shirts kind of secondary, t-shirts and hats. So anyway, thank you all, take care of yourselves, and see you on the next world. Harmony Turbines. We now have the power to change the world.